What's up, Docs and Docettes? Trevor Thompson, the self-appointed Looney Tunes critic here. And, well, it's that time of the year again. Time to uh, send uh, hearts and flowers and candies to your betrothed, your beloved. And um, I'll tell you something that I don't love, and a lot of people know that I don't love, are the, uh, the Looney Tunes uh, specials, the TV specials. And uh, this is admittedly one that, I mean, I people that watch this channel know, I, I don't like television animation by and large and to me putting looney tunes through the ringers uh, and demands of television uh was was never a good idea and sometimes it's been done better than other times um the specials are um a much cheaper version of the uh you know some of the looney tunes movies out there like you know the looney looney bugs bunny movie or chuck's uh chuck jones's um bugs bunny roadrunner movie but um, essentially what they're doing is taking from their old stock library, their old cartoons uh, from the vaults from uh, the 30s, 40s, 50s, and early 60s and using much cheaper means and much cheaper animators and lesser talent, quite frankly, uh, to make linking animation to come up with a whole new conceit with this old animation. And it's never done overtly well I would say I've yet to review it on this channel, but probably the best one ever was never actually aired, and it was called um, Bugs Bunny's Lunar Tunes. Um, I interviewed uh, an animator from it, uh, Kevin Brownie. I'm trying to interview uh, and work on, on talking to uh, Nancy Beeman, who directed it, and uh, I've definitely talked to the producer and writer of it, the, uh, the great Greg Ford, who we all know and love. But um, that one is pretty darn good, I have to say, because it doesn't really try to do the impossible the way these things do which is you know link take animation let you know from these old cartoons and then put new animation of the same scene you know and even mel blank sounds different it's just it just you can't it's not convincing um and in a weird way it does kind of cheapen <clears throat> the original animation i mean the only reason the only reason to watch these is because the cartoons that they use are so great I mean, I think I speak for most Looney Tunes fans when I say that when we watch these things, if we think about it, we fast forward through all of the uh, the new animation and we just we sit and watch the, the cartoons as they are. They're mostly intact in those cases. So, um, but even with all this vast knowledge that I do have of, of this stuff, I never saw this thing. I never saw it on television, and um, it's a it, the what I have here is the uh, DVD copy, but. Um, I, I never saw it on TV. I didn't know about it. And now that I've actually watched it once to, uh, to prep for this, um, I'm honestly glad I didn't see it. It's, I'll tell you right now, spoilers, you're not missing anything. <laughs> um, if you have somebody uh, with you on this day of love, I, your, your time would be much better spent you know, doing things with them. Maybe watch this thing and, and laugh at it and point and go, ha ha, isn't it crappy? And then, you know, but... Um, I mean, it's, it's, it is good, but it's not good on its own merit. It's good because of the cartoons that are used in it and are the majority of the animation. There is one really, truly gre egregious offense that this thing uh, pulls off, and I'll talk to that about that at the end because it happens at the end, and we'll get into that. But, uh, yeah, so without any more further ado, here is my review slash reaction of Bugs Bunny's Cupid Capers, formerly whatever this says. <laughs> Bugs Bunny's Valentine's Day special, something like that, I don't know. Here we go. <laughs> right away I can tell this is not, this is an old cartoon, this is a... Uh, Oh, this is that. Uh, this is that. Um, that one where it's yeah. They have honey. There's uh, there's honey bun Daisy, excuse me, and uh, Daisy. So here's where it goes from the cartoon to uh, the new animation. Right with the anvil sound effect that we hear. Right when the anvil hits his head. Right here. <laughs> hear that and and then the bugs just walks over hey by the way i have this oh like that's 
they they have him walking off and they know they need to make an intro so they have him and this is re reused animation um be quiet i'm hunting lonesome hearts that need to fall in love ah. Ooh, that ha ah, what is that from Oh, uh, look, so here's something interesting about Elmer's outline there. They never actually drew his outline. I like how his, they made his hat smaller there. Um, that's an interesting design choice, actually, I have to say. Uh, the small hat there to make it look like that Cupid design. But that outline that he's got there, that colored outline, that is something that is, you know, eats into the budget for this because... Um, at this time, when this thing was made, which was late 70s, early 80s, doing ink, out, actual ink on cells, outlines, was, was almost a thing of the past, and it was an extra budget, uh, budgetary issue. So I don't know who uh, decided that, Mel, that uh, Elmer needed this, uh, this weird outline, this flesh-colored outline, but um, it's wasted money. <laughs> That's what it is. All this great animation... Um, you're going to see, uh, you're going to notice this, by the way. There's a lot of uh, my favorite animator, Rod uh, Scribner, um, featured in these cartoons, even though they're not the, the, the Clampet era. Again, look at that. We go right from that to crappy animation. Um, you, you see a lot of, uh, of, of some, of some as, as I now know from having uh, had the, the, the joy of getting to meet Scribner's uh, kids and talk to them, I now know that uh, he was least happy working with McKim's, and so we're going to see some scenes of a truly rebellious and struggling Scribner in uh, in these cartoons. But of course, we are not going to see any Scribner with uh, this Pepe stuff because not only was Scribner not in Chuck Jones's unit, but he wouldn't have ever been in there because Chuck hated him. <laughs> Lay ha ha. <laughs> Ah, this tempestuous one. She is overcome by her emotions at seeing me again. Okay, so watch the, the, the link from uh, the uh, Chuck Jones animation. Because you see them outside of that tent later on. Um, you know, Chuck, or um, Bugs and uh, Elmer Cupid. By the way, Elmer shows up later on to disper So that's the old background, but it's not the old background. They redrew it. It's like, so it would match. But you're making animation to match this animation, so why? Uh, I don't know. It's um, it's something I'll never understand fully why uh why these kind of specials were made. They're not uh, they're not entirely effective in what they're intended to do. Regard short of you know entertain with the values of the cartoons, you know the the merits of the cartoons themselves. <laughs> it is funny though seeing Pepe get a taste of his own medicine I must say <laughs> and she's even jumping like him so yeah so they're just like they're just watching and saying things like oh well if it was up to me I would do it this way and Cupid is saying look you need to do it this way Bugs if you're going to take my job and there's all these weird animation mistakes there and then it cuts and then it just cuts to this great animation by Rod Scribner, and I just, it's just, it's so, it's so jarring to me. Like, I don't know, I don't know that other people feel it. Um, although it is cool that B. Benaderet gets a voice credit in this, uh, in this special, um, which he didn't in the original cartoon. Careful with his arrows. This kind of thing could get somebody into trouble. It doesn't. I wish it got people into trouble. So this is the era. This is a, a guy named uh, Hal Gear. Um, he, a guy uh, produced this thing, and, and Hal Gear, among other things, was um, well. Obviously, he's not a uh, he's, he's not a stickler for quality. The uh, Hal Gear um, era, which is what this is from, this this special, and he. Um, we're gonna see that, by the way. Those bells. Um, I'm surprised we didn't see them more, uh, to be completely honest. Um, I'm surprised we didn't see them more, because there's a number of cartoons where when characters get married, they, they cut to the, the wedding bells. Um, 
there's another one here with, coming up uh, with uh, Yosemite Sam and when they when Bugs gets married and uh, um, to him they, again it cuts to the, the almost that same shot not the same shot uh, here we are with uh, Devil May Hair the very first uh, Taz cartoon and I and and you know. Sometimes I crap on the uh, the restorations getting the colors wrong. But the restorations can sometimes be iffy about getting the colors right. But watching this now, it actually makes me miss the restoration, the new clean rep, because the restorations got the colors so right for the for this. Like the that sky is is a very very subtle pink, and now through the you know the, the copy that we have here of the this Hal Gear special, it's just beige, brown, very. The, the color for this cartoon, even the characters, even Bugs has a slightly lighter gray shade, are so great. It's one of the greatest, the most pretty, the prettiest things about this cartoon. Not Devil May Hair, is the colors. And I'm actually missing the restoration on this one. So yeah, and that's, again, they're, they're using the one segment of this cartoon where there's actually... Um, you know, some kind of romance and Bugs is using it as an example. <clears throat> We're going to cut in a look at more great Rod Scribner animation. And he's just trying to do something fun and interesting. And, and McKimson just won't let him watch this. I think they've got that wrong. I think they've gotten the, those two voices backwards. All the wild loves a lover. But in this case, we'll make an exception. So there's actually a commercial break where they use the iris out. And again, here's a piece of animation that requires a, a hand, a little bit of uh, talent, just have that moving background and it takes up a bit of money. But why do that? You know, when you could just, oh, whatever. I, for years, I didn't understand this in the cartoon bugs and Yosemite Sam reading the newspaper as posted at the newspaper office. Apparently it happened. 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 So, by the way, there's um, there's something I don't I don't know if I've ever pointed this out in one of the commentaries for in the commentary for this cartoon if I ever did the commentary for this cartoon. But coming up, it was like probably one of my first like as a kid like noticing that there was a uh, like a like a continuity outtake. Obviously, there's not real continuity from shot to shot because they're drawings. But coming up, um. They, they cut a gag here in uh, the special, um, but they showed the tail end of it where he's... He... <laughs> You're cute. Let's see, Lil. Okay, you get to the window. I'll get a ladder. He's got a ladder. I want to take a few There's already a ladder there. <laughs> now that I've actually said it, it's kind of... So oh, what, dude? <laughs> <laughs> there it is again there's the bell shot you don't see them physically but it's you know it's implied oh look at that see cartoon characters are always you without pants take this woman woman to be your lawful wedded wife <laughs> see no one wants to marry a furry <laughs> it, it, it certainly didn't get more more great rod scribner animation you guys look at this it just you can feel rod scribner rebelling against mckimson's uh stiff but albeit you know solid poses and so this is more scribner that's shit and then there's more scribner <laughs> i don't know i i you're despicable, just plain despicable. Nobody's committed any crime. Like yeah, anytime, right here, like anytime Daffy starts getting really, all the shapes get interesting, there's more wrinkles, he's moving around more. That's Rod Scribner. That's Rod Scribner rebelling against the restrictions that, that uh, McKimson is throwing at him. And McKimson doesn't think it works, but you, you guys tell me, look at that. That's beautiful. That is taking advantage of the art form while still doing the job of acting, conveying emotions, and, you know, making the, the short, the forms look solid and shapely, and also keeping the director's art style intact, which is not something that's important anymore, but it was back then. And I, yeah, 
So, uh, again, crappy coloring book art style. We're back to that. Um, the, the, the director of this, by the way, is a guy named Jim Davis. And um, if you know anything about Garfield, you know that that's not the same guy. But in terms of blandness, it may as well be. <laughs> the, the, the editing on this cartoon, I have to say, is very creative. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, shoehorning to get this cartoon to fit into the thing. And again, here comes a suicide joke that we couldn't do today. Even though you really never see it, that's uh, still a suicide joke. But the joke, again, is not, there are no suicide jokes, really. Oh, he's wanting to play seeking go hide. Seeking go hide, go hiding, go seeking. I'm seeking for you, you're hiding for me. I love this joke. Watch this. this watch this. Yeah. <laughs> she's a homely girl <laughs> she's a big girl she's sturdy is what they say in the south how do you do how do you do how do you do yeah that's uh that is a reference as there are so many in in looney tunes cartoons it's a radio reference to a character called the mad russian how do you do? Marriage. I hate long engagements. Uh, what say we alone? Give to me large kiss. Oh no. Oh no. Hey man, big girls need love too, Elmer. Don't be uh don't be a schmuck about it. So here comes good old Bugs as a uh, as a cupid. Like a little matchmaker though. <laughs> See they didn't they didn't uh, try to link that to Elmer as Cupid and all that they're just putting this little gag here at the end from my uh a pepe Le Pew cartoon after the commercial <sighs> no real consistency that's a panther that's not penelope again there's a like i said a lot of shoehorning to make these uh and conceits to make these cartoons work but um the cartoons are still great it's the linking that fucks you up. That's great advice. Is it really? Because, you know, oh, well, I guess Bugs is still holding the, uh, the, the and then he just looks at the case. Okay, here's, here's my, my shit. Look at these commercials. This is my grief. Hal Gear, okay? Animation directors, Jim Davis, Chris Freeling, Chuck Jones, McKimson, and then, and then writers, Warren Foster, Hal Gear, and animation. All of the, all of these fuckers are being lumped together like they were in on it together. Like the, in, in most cases in the credits, they break up the cartoon they, or there's some indication. Um, there's, there's usually some indication like in, in these credits here uh, where it says something about classic cartoons were directed by and here's the new stuff. It separates that. But there's a, a concerted effort as we just saw in those credits to to lump them all together and that's something that it only exists in this version of it in the cupid capers version of this special um the the version that is bugs bunny's valentine's day special or whatever the alternate is called it if you look that up it does have the differentiation so there's something about the cupid capers version and these credits i'm i, I would assume hal gear had something to do with it and and made sure that his, his Sid Marcus and Jim Davis and him all got some kind of credit so they could put their names next to these greats. And it's like, don't put the, the crummy animators names next to like Rod Scribner and, and, and all these greats. It, it cheapens the work even more so than putting the animation, this crappy new animation next to the good animation. It, but you know, I said, look, I think that these things are largely about nostalgia more than anything else. I don't think that they're, when people defend, you know, some of these crummier specials, I don't think they're defending anything other than the good feelings, the memories of how seeing this over the years with, you know, their family and at home at a you know, more innocent time brings them. I think that's what it is. Ultimately, I think it's more about nostalgia because, you know, all of those cartoons featured in the in, in the special are great. But the special leaves a bad taste in your mouth, and it's it's just enough. That crappy linking animation that Hell Gear Studio did—it's just enough to make this feel 
this overall experience feel good because like i said as soon as you get into the mode of watching a good cartoon watching you know watching these these the, the work of these these directors at the and their animators at the height of their output and performance and talents and then as soon as you're into it it's like you know, it's like a cold bucket of water to the face when it cuts to the other stuff so that's my my problem with this but it's a problem i have with a lot of this stuff um so you know i i guess i i, I don't if it had to be rated i don't think it needs to be rated but if it has to be rated i would give it um three out of ten stars um two maybe um i appreciate the if the effort of things like the extra money being spent for uh you know the the um the outlines on elmer you know i guess that's kind of cool in a time when they were doing xerox line work um i guess that's kind of cool that they they spent the money for that and that they you know there's this some cool moving background animation that had to be a bit tricky to, to pull off and, and they probably weren't rotoscoping or, or anything like that um i guess that i guess that's cool um and i guess you could say that it's cool that um it's really cool that b benaderet and june foray got their own title card together and uh especially for for them uh and b benaderet especially because b never got uh, credit, uh, screen credit, and June rarely got uh, screen credit. So, like I say, it's it's nice it's nice for those things, but it I'm I'll tell you this. Um, I'm going to be revisiting Valentine's Day every year, as we all do. I don't think I will be revisiting Bugs Bunny's Valentine's Day special, aka Bugs Bunny's Cupid Capers, anytime soon. So this, uh, this holiday is about love and I don't love it. <laughs> so that's going to do it for this uh, review of uh, Bugs Bunny's Cupid Capers. Tell me what you guys thought of it in the comments. If you guys have any nostalgic, uh, you know, stories about watching this uh, when you were a kid, if it was, uh, if you remember it from that, if you remember it from uh, some other thing. Um, and also uh, give, be sure to give a thumbs up, like, and subscribe to all that stuff. Click the bell for notifications because subscribing is not always enough, folks. Sometimes we're doing live streams apropos of, of nothing or apropos of a week of telling you in advance and you're just never getting the information. And you don't want to know that. You want to know when we have a, a good Saturday morning coming up, like that's like my shirt here says. So um, good Saturday morning, which is a live stream where we stream cartoons and uh and we talk about them a little bit but mainly it's just so we can have a good time watching cartoons of a saturday morning with our friends and um you don't know if that's gonna happen you know always necessarily but if you ring that it's not enough to subscribe if you click that bell for the notifications you'll never miss anything you'll never miss a, a live stream or a, you know any kind of fun stuff or engaging stuff that we do so uh be sure to do all that stuff and until next time Dance on, folks. Hey, what?